So before we look at um, today's topic of the rule of four, I just wanted to take a second to review some of the things that we've been learning in this unit. So the first thing that's really important is we've been looking at a table. And remember, we started with looking at a pattern, and that pattern allowed us to make a table, and then we got some information from the table. So for example, let's say this is our table. We figured out what we called the first difference which was what the y's were going up or down by, we had to double check that the x's were going up by one every time. That tells us, if, this, if we get the same number every time, it tells us that the equation or the relationship is linear. So we know right away that this one is linear compared to, say, this one. Which has different numbers, oops, that's a two, and is nonlinear. So then we looked at how could we go from knowing that it's linear and forming an equation. So we looked at this basic structure of an equation, and we learned that this was what you go up or down by, or a new fancy word we learned called first difference. Then we learned that this number was the value of y when x was 0. And we learned that that was something fancy called the y-intercept, which is simply a fancy word for if I had a line here, that would be the y-intercept because that's where the line crosses the y-axis. Then what we did was we started to look at slope. So if I have this line, so for example, um, if I have a line here and I were given two points, I could form a triangle and I could find the rise and I could find the run and I could find the slope. Now what we're actually doing there, if you look at this line, what we're trying to figure out by looking at slope is what's the line going up or down by. So really then if we think about it, the slope is the same as what we're going up or down by, and that's the same as the first differences. So now we're going to put this all together in something called the rule of four. The rule of four is simply combining everything we've kind of learned and realizing that relationships can be expressed in four different ways, using words, a graph, a table, and an equation. And when we talk about a table, we remember the beginning of all of this was looking at patterns. So technically, you could go from a pattern to a table, um, but we're going to be just looking at it. So again, if we come back to here now, equation of a line, we now, have, we now know that this first part, this something x, is actually the slope. It's the first difference. It's what you go up and down by. And in math, we call that the letter M. And then the second part we learned was the y-intercept, or the value of y when x is 0. And in math, we call that B. So the equation of the line is the formula y equals mx plus b. And you've actually been working with this all along. You just didn't really know what the things were. You didn't know what they were called. Now you do. Now you know that the, what they're called, and you know what the variables are. So here's an example of rule of four. So it tells us that a, a tortoise can move four meters per minute. And I'm actually just going to stop this because the answer should not be in here, so I'm going to erase it. Okay, there, I've restarted and erased all the answers. So, a tortoise can move four meters per minute. So, th this part is actually giving us, it's giving us the words. So, we're being given the words, and we've got to figure out the other things. So, we've got to figure out the table, the equation, and the graph. So, the first thing we have to do is think, okay, let's fill in the table. Let's start with zero, one, two, and three. So, what if no minutes go by? Then we would move zero. And I guess I should actually backtrack for a second. Because what I have to actually do, the table has an X and Y, but the words say meters and minutes. So I need to be able to figure out what's the X and what's the Y. 
So in this case, the X represents the number of minutes, and the Y represents the distance for the number of meters. It comes back to something we had talked about, about independent and dependent variables. So the X is always going to be the independent variable. And the Y is always going to be the dependent variable. Um, and you always want to define what your variables are because if you're given words and you don't know what the X and the Y represent, it becomes confusing. So you always have to tell um, what is your X representing, what is your Y representing. So in one minute, the tortoise can move four, in two minutes can go eight, in three minutes can go 12. So now we're going to come up with the equation. So again, we have to look at the table. We have to think about what are we going up or down by. In this case, it's four. What's our Y intercept? In this case, it's zero, so our equation is y equals 4x. Then we have to graph this. So all we can do, one of the easiest ways to do is just to take our table. Put a dot at 0, 0, put a dot at 1, 4, put a dot at 2, 8, and so on. You probably won't fit 3, 12. And then you get your ruler and you connect the dots. The only other thing you have to think about is in this particular scenario, should the line go in both directions? In this case, it does not because we can't have negative time. So we're only gonna go that way because this is our X, our time, and this is our Y, our distance. Let's look at another example. So this particular one gives us a table. So we've gotta come up with all of the other things. Now, because they don't give us any context, we don't define the X and Y because we don't know what they are. There's no um, sort of scenario along with this. So we don't need to define the variables in this case. So again, we start by figuring out, is it linear? And it is, it goes up by three every time. And then we can see that our y-intercept will be two. We can graph it, again, by using the table of values. And in this case, because there's no context, we are going to put arrows in both directions because it, for as far as we're concerned, is just a line. We're not sure exactly what it's a line of. In term, in here where we're using words, because we don't have a scenario, we're using words like slope is three, y-intercept is two, and we have a positive. Okay, so we're describing the, the words, we're describing the graph using words based on what we do know about the relationship. So here's an example that gives us an equation. And now we've got to find the other pieces. Again, because it doesn't give us a scenario, we don't need to define the x and y. So recall, if I give you the x's and I give you the equation, to get the y's, all you need to do is substitute. So for example, we're going to replace the x with negative 2. We're going to use Bedmas to get our y. We're going to replace the x with negative 1. We're going to use Bedmas to get our y. We're going to replace our x with 0. We're going to use Bedmas to get our y. Now, if you've caught on to the fact that you know that this equation is linear, you might realize that you're going to be going up by two every time. So you could actually just now fill it in without needing to do this work down here. So it depends if that works for you, it works for you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Again, words, we're going to describe the graph um, or the relationship using words. We're going to say things like the slope is two. The y-intercept is negative and one thing I forgot on the last thing that you should say, this one has a partial variation. You should mention that. Let's go back to the last one while I think about it. So this particular one also had a partial variation. 
by the way, quick refresher, this one here, because it went through 0, 0, this one had a direct variation. And then to graph it again, we can use our table of values, negative 2, negative 7, negative 1, negative 5, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 1, 2, 1. We can get our ruler. Because we don't have a context, we can draw our arrows in both directions. So that's kind of what the rule of four is. It gives you one piece and you've got to find the other piece. So it's describing a relationship with a table, with words, with a graph, and with an equation. So let's look a little bit um, more closely about how to graph a line without using a table. So for example, oh, sorry, this one is how to come up with the equation just by given information. So remember, equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. So in this case, I'm giving you the m and I'm giving you the b. You just need to fill in the blanks and come up with the equation. For that one, you could write plus zero or you could just leave it. Now, this one's a little bit of a tricky one. Think about it. Zero x minus 1, that'll be like that. What kind of a line is that? So if you think back to what you've been learning in this unit, anything that has a slope of 0, it means that it doesn't have a rise, which means that it will be a horizontal line. So all horizontal lines have y equals something as their equation. There is no x in them. So it's kind of an interesting thing because Slope of 0, 0 times x will become 0. So here's one where I give you a picture and I'm asking you to find the slope and y-intercept. So right away, the y-intercept is super easy. It's right there, right? It's the point where the line crosses the y-axis. So that's the point 0, 3. So the b, in this case, is 3. To get the slope, you have to find two points. You have to make your triangle. You have to calculate your rise and calculate your run. And there's our slope. Now, I didn't ask you to do this, but if I did, if I said, what is the equation of this line? You can then just fill in the pieces that you know. So here is what I was talking about before. If I just give you the equation, can you come up with the slope and y-intercept? And then can you graph it without using a table? So right away, if we remember the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. So right away, here's my m. My m is 3. My slope is 3. Here's my b. My b or my y-intercept is negative 5. That's pretty straightforward. This one, mx plus b. So again, my m is 4. And my plus b, remember, there's nothing there, which really means like plus 0. So my b is 0. The third one is a little bit tricky because it's not written in this format here. It's not, it doesn't say y equals. But we've learned algebra. We've learned equations. We know how to take an equation and make it, say, solve for a different unknown. So we can take this equation and we can move the 3x to the other side. And then we can divide everything by 2. And now it's in the correct format. It's in the mx plus b format. Now you can say that your slope is negative 3 over 2 and your y-intercept is 4. So how can we take this information and how can we graph these lines without a table? So as soon as I know this first one, for example, my slope is negative, that my y-intercept is negative 5. That represents a point. I can put a dot at negative 5, at 0, negative 5. Then it tells me that my slope is 3. So from that dot, a slope of 3 means 3 over 1. It means rise 3, run 1. I can go up 3 over 1. I can go up 3 over 1. I can take my ruler and I can draw the line. That's the line, 3x minus 5. I can do the same for the second one. 
So I always want to start at my y-intercept. So in this case, my y-intercept or my b is 0. So that's the point 0, 0 right there. Then it tells me that my slope is 4. Remember, that means 4 over 1. That means rise 4 and run 1. So I can go up 4 over 1, up 4 over 1. I can get my ruler, and I can make my line. And then the last one, same idea. I'm always going gonna, gonna to go to this form of the equation though, for the last one. So again, I'm going to start at my y-intercept of 4. From that dot, this one, because it's negative, I need to go down and right or up and left. So I can go up 3 and over 2, or I can choose to go down 3 and right 2. And they're going to share a point, and that's okay. And then I get my ruler. So you can now graph these lines or these equations without needing a table of values. If you know what the y-intercept is, that represents a point. And if you know what the slope is, you can count the rise and count the run from the point to create more points. Then you can get your ruler and make the line.